What's up guys? Welcome back to the Classic Car Maintenance Channel. In today's video, we're going to review the Kiwitz Intelligent Electric Soldering Iron, the KETS-02. First impression, it comes in a nicely designed box, so that's a good start. Then when we look at the back, you can see clear instructions on how to install the soldering iron tip. Looks pretty simple. There's also some basic parameters listed over here, like the model number, the power and power supply, and that it's an OLED screen. It's also got the temperature range listed from 180 to 780 degrees Fahrenheit, which covers most applications, and it works on different operating voltages. You can get the basic set with only one soldering iron tip or six different like we got, and it's available with a US, UK, or EU power adapter. They're all the exact same device, apart from the adapter block, of course. Now let's take a look inside and see what we got. Okay, so you can immediately see the user manual. This should tell us everything we need to know to use this device. And it's explained in six different languages, including English, Spanish, Italian, German, French, and Japanese. Okay then, let's take a look at the power supply. It's a 65 watt gallium nitride power supply. Just one of these fancy super fast power supplies alone will set you back 30 bucks online and it feels surprisingly heavy and quality made. It's got a USB-C and a USB fast charging port, which is nice so you could probably use the soldering iron and plug in something else too if you only have one socket available. It's got a thin protective cover wrapped around it, but we're gonna leave it on for the time being. And now, let's look at the soldering iron itself. I really like the design of it. It's got like a gadgety look to it. It looks like it has a small protector on the OLED screen. Although it kind of looks like it is just the edge and not an entire protector. It's got two buttons and they feel really nice. You have nice feedback and a clicky sound. You can even use them with thick gloves. The casing itself is aluminum, it appears, and not some cheap plastic. It gives a real quality feel to it. The tip is rubber so your fingers don't slip, and it has these indents for your fingers to give even more grip. Feels pretty good if you ask me. The tip should twist off easily, like we saw in the box. It doesn't have a flimsy feel to it, so I wouldn't be concerned with breaking it while tightening the screw. Just like that, you take it off, and then you should just slide the soldering iron tip in there and tighten it back on. And now let's take out the cap for the soldering iron. If we ever manage to get it out, Good for transport that it's stuck in there though. Same slick design like the rest of the soldering iron. And also made from aluminum. As you can see, the centerpiece here is where the soldering iron tip should be. But because this is the version with six different tips, it's probably in a set with the rest. I guess in this box. But if you have only one tip, that's where you'll find it. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so when you get it open in probably one third of the time it took me, you'll be greeted by this set of what I assume are the six different soldering iron tips. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yup, that's all of them. We've got a knife tip and also a bigger one. Then we got a conical or cone shaped tip with again, it's larger brother. And we also have the hoof or bevel tip also in two sizes. If I'm not mistaken, the small hoof tip is the one you receive with the one tip version of this set, but don't take my word for it. Let's put this to the side and see what else is inside the box. Okay, so there's this little stand for the soldering iron. Looks like it is just made from hard plastic. Pretty basic looking compared to the rest. And further in the box, there's the charging cable. It's nicely held together by a leathery looking strap. Oh, looks like I dropped something. It appears to be the tiny dried sponge that should fit in the soldering iron stand, like so. And you can flip the metal part up to rest your hot soldering iron. Basic, but it probably works pretty well. Now, let's get back to the charging cable. You just unclip it like so. And I have to admit, I'm once again quite surprised by the quality. I, I don't think I've ever had such a nice cable with a product before. It's a kind of really soft, flexible silicone cable. Not to mention the connectors. They really went all out with the design. Even the ends are protected by these little caps that prevent dirt from entering the USB-C connector. 
Yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised. Hope it works as good as it looks. Now, the first thing to do is to try and install one of the soldering iron tips. It doesn't really matter which one, but we're going to try the standard hoof shape that is also included in the single tip set. You can tear off the top strip of the plastic packaging or just push the tip through. It doesn't matter. I like to push them through, so I can put them back afterwards and keep it nicely organized. Let's first take a closer look. The tip looks pretty nice. Let's try and install it like instructed on the box. You just push it in all the way until it reaches that little edge, like so. And then you screw on the top. Really impressed by the design. Feels pretty good in your hand as well, and the screen stays faced towards you for easy reading. Let's put on the protective cap. I can't put it on so the brand lines up with the screen, which is a bit of a shame. And it doesn't seem to fit as well as hoped. Can't seem to get it off again either. Although it... Oh, no. Wait, now. I see. Let me show you. You have to put it onto the side and then twist it so it locks into place. And then everything fits nicely. Put it on sideways and twist it. Simple as that. Makes it even better protected as the cap cannot fall off. Before we start, let's slide off the protective cover first and plug this side in. Plugs in nicely and the connection feels pretty sturdy as well. Let's try to get some life in that flat dried out sponge. You should dampen it so it fluffs up, but you don't want to soak it. It's starting to look a lot better already. Let's try to get a bit more life in it though. I don't think we can get it any thicker without soaking it, but this is good enough to use. It may be a bit small to be really practical, but we'll see during the tests. Let's grab the manual and see what we can do with it. It can operate on different voltage ranges, depending on what power supply you're using, which affects melting times, so keep that in mind. The operating instructions are pretty simple. I suggest you give it a quick look as there are several easy controls and a couple of things you can adjust in the menu, like the screen brightness. If you have a soldering iron thermometer, you can also calibrate the device. You can adjust the display temperature to Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can set a sleep time and sleep temperature. It even has a child lock modus for extra safety. And no worries if you're left-handed, you can easily adjust that too in the menu. And lastly, you should adjust the voltage gear depending on what power supply you're using as it works with 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts. But then, the most important reminder, which is explained here and is something you should do with every soldering iron tip, is to tin the tip. This will greatly increase the life expectancy of your soldering iron tips. Now let's plug it in and try it out. So the screen immediately lights up and now it appears to be telling me to press the left button. I'm going to take the protective cap off first. Okay, so the screen is pretty clear to read and you can see the left button there flashing. You'll need to push that to turn it on, I guess. But let's first get rid of this protector that's stuck on there. Okay, so it appears to be a fake protector. It's just a little sticker pretending to be a protector. Enough talking, let's turn it on now and see what happens. So it immediately starts heating up and the sensor is trying to dial in the correct temperature it seems. In the right bottom side of the screen, it says that it is set for 300 degrees Celsius, which is about 570 degrees Fahrenheit. It's probably because it's the first time starting up that it needs a moment to get it right. It looks like it is stabilizing now. And the tip is indeed already super warm. 
so best to first tin coat it now. Okay, so it sure enough has stabilized now at 300. Now it's time to grab our solder and put a bit on there so it's not dry burning. The tip would otherwise start oxidizing and you don't want that. Just put some on both sides so it's well coated. A nice little coat of solder and it's protected. Nothing more to it. And while we're at it, we can try out our little soldering iron stand with sponge. You do have to hold it because it's so light you would otherwise move it around, but other than that, it works pretty well. The sponge itself does want to move a bit too, but it's not too bad. As you can see, the sponge is just loosely sitting in there and not really held in place by anything else. But for a portable soldering iron kit, it does its job. But that's about it. Okay, then let's take a quick look at the menu and the controls. So. To enter the menu, you have to short press both buttons at the same time, like so. And to navigate through the menu, you short press the left or right button. You can, for example, go to temperature units, and when you long press the right button, you select that setting, like so. And then in the menu, you can short press the left or right button to scroll through the settings. When you have selected the right setting, just long press the right button to confirm, and you will go back to the main menu. You can just go through the settings you want to change. It's really easy. And if you want to go back to the temperature display screen, you just have to long press the left button. Now let's get soldering. For our tests, we're first going to use the soldering iron to connect these wires. Afterwards, we're going to try to solder thicker gauge wires and we're going to finish with some electrical components. Although a lot of soldering wire already contains a small amount of flux, we like to add some extra so it flows better. Put a little bit on the tip first so you can create a heat bridge. It makes the material heat up faster. And when it is getting all warmed up to temperature, you can start adding the solder to it. First impression, it works pretty damn good. Heats up fast, transfers heat pretty well, and maintains its temperature. Looks promising. We're going to let it cool down first and then take a closer look. Looks pretty good if you ask me. The solder and iron had no problem heating it up all the way, so the solder really got in between the copper strands creating a strong connection. Feels really solid. Now we're going to push this soldering iron with the small hoof tip to the limit and try to solder a thicker wire. We're going to speed this process up because it took quite a while. The small tip doesn't have the mass or surface area to efficiently heat up the thick wire. This is why it is a good thing to have multiple soldering iron tips. Although you can do most things with the small hoof tip, sometimes other tips work a lot faster and better. We got there in the end, but it is far from ideal and you'll lose a lot of time if you have to solder stuff with more mess. Although it's a strong connection which will do the job, it's not the prettiest and it looks like the solder didn't flow as easily between the strands as the previous test. So I would personally recommend to make life easier for yourself and go for multiple tips. As we're going to demonstrate in the next test, using a different tip makes a huge difference. This is the small hoof tip we have been using and now we're going to use a bigger hoof tip that comes with the set. Although it is a different color wire than the thick red one from the previous test, it is the same size and as you can see, it is clearly a lot thicker than the first test we did. So once again, we're going to add some flux. Then we're going to create a heat bridge to get it going. You can see that it is heating up a lot faster than with the small hoof tip. It is clearly not the case that this soldering iron is underpowered for applications like these. 
you just need to use the right tip. The smaller tip took about four times longer to get the job done. Talking about a difference. Looks like the solder managed to get all the way in there and spread out nicely. Yeah, that's definitely a strong connection. Another test passed without problem. This soldering iron is really starting to convince me. For the next test, we're going to remove the wires from the battery posts. They're soldered on pretty thick, so we'll see how this one goes. Once again, we're going to use the standard small hoof-shaped tip. When you manage to get the flat part of the hoof-shaped tip in there and get good contact, the solder almost immediately starts to soften, and the wire gets loose. It's more a matter of getting the right angle for contact at this point. I feel like the soldering iron has more than enough power to do all these things. I've been looking at the temperature while soldering and it hasn't even dropped down once. And just like that, it starts softening and before you know it, boom, the wire is loose. We'll do a couple more to give you some more examples of smaller electrical stuff. Just get the tip in there and before you know it, it's loose. I honestly feel that I'm the weak link now trying to solder through the camera lens because when you angle the tip just right for good contact, it melts the solder like it is nothing. Just like that, with the right angle, it melts away. I could do this again and again and again. Soldering is really satisfying and fun when you have the right tools. Nothing more frustrating than waiting a minute for your old soldering iron to heat up only for it to not even work properly. But yeah, I think you get the idea by now. This one works great. Okay, so I've been testing and using the stand and sponge for a while now, and it works. But nothing more than that. The metal support does its job. The sponge does its job. But visually, it's just a bit of a letdown, to be honest. It looks a bit cheap, especially compared to how nice the soldering iron itself looks. Awesome design, gadgety feel to it, made from aluminum. I absolutely love this thing. But then you have this... It kind of looks like it comes from a different set or soldering iron because there's such a big difference in visual appeal. It's just a block of plastic with a piece of metal attached to it. But yeah, apart from that, it works amazing. Heats up quickly, maintains temperature, and manages to solder pretty much anything when you use the right tip. One thing that I would have liked to see different is the USB-C connector on the soldering iron itself. Although it never comes loose, it does flex quite a bit, which makes me worry about longevity. I would have preferred if they had a screw-on connector on the soldering iron side. But if you're not using it intensively every day, I doubt this connector will ever fail you. Just like most small, wired tools, this soldering iron also has the tendency to roll in your hand if the cable is wound up a bit. So just make sure to turn it around when it is fighting back and the problem is solved. It's something that pretty much every tool like this will have, so it's just a reminder on how to easily deal with it and not a downside of this specific one. But yeah, I really liked using this product. It looks good. It feels good. It has that gadgety look to it. It's easy to use and it works pretty darn good too. Is it going to be sturdy enough for professional use on the road and getting dropped sometimes? Not sure, but for most people it is the ideal soldering companion. And talking about value for money, the gallium nitride power supply alone would set you back around 30 bucks online. Go figure. So if you're in the market for a good portable soldering iron that's not too expensive, then this one might be just for you. You can check it out through the link in the description below. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you liked our video, please consider liking and subscribing. More videos are on their way, so we'll see you on the next one.